Hello the internet and welcome back to my channel. On the bench today I have an ATX power supply. Now we've encountered this power supply on one of my previous videos and we discovered that it's not working. And back then I decided not to invest any time on this unit. It, you know, it feels cheap, it doesn't feel like good quality. But uh, some of my comments under the video just changed my mind. A couple of reasons. The first one is this power supply features a minus five volts output. Now, I can think of a couple of uh, solutions to get minus 5 volts out of a power supply which doesn't have minus 5 volts. One is the Necroware little board and the other one is um, Bits and Bolts little adapter which connects to the uh, plug to the power supply itself. But still, it'd be nice to have a power supply with minus 5 volts, you know, just out of the power supply since I have it. And the other reason is that this power supply seems to be like designed for those older CPUs which require quite a lot of uh, current on the 5 volts line. Now the 5 volts is rated, at least the label says, it's rated 35 amps and if I'm checking on my uh, Cooler Master here, it's uh, kind of, it's, it's not brand new but anyway it's uh, 750 watts compared to the 350 watts of this power supply my Cooler Master can only provide 25 amps. That's another good reason to try and, and fix this power supply. So, let me thank PCBWay, the sponsor of this video, and let's uh, not waste any more time. Let's open it up and see if we can fix it. The first thing I'm going to do, I think I'm going to blow the dust off this thing, which is pretty disgusting as, as usual. Before we begin, the usual disclaimer, power supplies are dangerous, so unless you know what you're doing, just don't touch power supplies and this is not a tutorial. Let me thank one of my viewers, DJ Marik 78 aka Marian. Marian has been kind enough to leave an interesting comment on my previous video, quite comprehensive on how to try and troubleshoot this type of power supplies. We've been in touch, Marian is a skilled engineer and he's been designing power supplies and amplifiers, so obviously he's much more skilled than I am, and I've got quite a few pointers on how to try and troubleshoot this power supply, and hopefully that will be enough for me to fix it. Thank you again, Marian, for your help and everybody who left a comment on my previous video and all my videos. Your help is always, always appreciated. All right, well, we did some checks last time during the video, but we can quickly check things. And I believe that the fuse is intact. It is. And I don't believe the problem is with the primary of the transformer, because uh, that would probably uh, blew the fuse and will trigger my protections and everything. I think last time I could hear some noise coming from the power supply and I could measure something like 7 volts on the controlling IC, which on this power supply, surprisingly, at least for me, is on the secondary side. Apparently on this power supply it's normal to have the controller on the secondary side, if I understand correctly, but I'm not entirely sure, so feel free to correct myself down below if I'm saying rubbish here. Uh, one of these transformers here is for the switching, for the actual um, generation of voltages. One other is for the 5 volts standby, which is always running, it's just a normal transformer and it runs whenever you, you plug the, uh, the mains to the uh, power supply. And the other one is uh, to send the control pulses, I guess, to the switching transistors, which are on the primary side. Obviously, there cannot be anything directly connected between primary and secondary. Uh, reason is for safety, because something might happen, you might end up with 220 at the output of the power supply. That cannot happen. So that's why the primary and the secondary are always very well separated. So the first thing I'd like to try is whether we have 5 volts standby. That is not telling me whether, uh, you know, most of the power supply is working, but it's a good start because I believe that the 5 volt standby is also used to power the uh, controller IC, which is on the secondary on this power supply. I've got the multimeter on the purple wire, which is the standby. Let me power up in uh, 3, 2, 1, go. We do have the 5 volt standby, that's interesting. Oh, and the power supply is making this kind of squealing noise when it's switching off. Let me see if I can capture it on the microphone. 
On the previous video we checked pin 12, which is the VCC for that little controller I see, and I think it was around 7 volts, and I think the datasheet says that 7 volts is like the minimum. Now, the user online said that this should actually have like something like 12 volts, and 7 volts is not enough. Let's double check what voltage I'm getting at that IC right now. Okay, I'm actually getting 6.7. This is good news, even according to the datasheet, 6.5 is not enough <laughs> for this IC to work. So, uh, what seems to be the problem is the supply, obviously, of that thing. And one thing to check is uh, capacitors, apparently. The capacitors um, feeding the, or actually helping that line to get to the proper voltage might be faulty. Now, before I go ahead and replace this one, I'd like to see with the oscilloscope how that line looks. I'd like to see whether I see ripple on that line, because that would tell me that the capacitor is actually not working. I'm using my differential probe with the power supply. That allows me not to have to worry about the ground going anywhere. So I'm safe with that. And let's see what we got on pin 12 uh, VCC for that controller IC. Okay. Um, okay. Well, that doesn't... <laughs> I'm not sure I'm supposed to see that. I don't think that's what you're supposed to say. I think you're supposed to see some sort of a DC voltage that's completely pulsing. And it might be that the capacitor has failed. Now, this is a single layer board, so the traces are only at the back and makes things much easier. And this area here, the all this pin here, that's my controller, controller IC. And I'm marked with black pin 12, which is the power supply, the voltage going into the IC. This pin is connected to this pin here, which is just a link, which is going to the other side. So this is uh, just connected, direct, uh, just the direct connection. And if I'm following the trace here, it goes down here, through this pin here, and it goes down to this one, which is a capacitor. So I'm assuming that this capacitor might be responsible for what we noticed, that the voltage is all over the place. Uh, I'm going to replace it and see if by any chance that helps. Now the capacitor is actually 2.2 microfarad, so 2348 nanofarad is correct, but it's also reading an ESR of 18 ohms, which is way too high. Um, but I'm not sure this capacitor is bad. Uh, that being said, I guess it doesn't hurt to replace it and see if that helps. Right now I haven't got 2.2 microfarad capacitors. I have 3.3. I'm hoping it's okay. Again, capacitors have 20% tolerance by, by design. So hopefully this is going to be okay, at least for a test. We are back on pin 12. Let's see if by any chance the behavior has changed. Power up in three, two, one, go. Nope. It hasn't changed at all. Hmm. Right, forget about the past few minutes. I was following the wrong trace. Uh, I do that all the time, so <laughs> um, it keeps happening. Right, so besides looking for the right trace, I've also found some generic schematics of power supplies based on the TL494. So they're not, it's not going to be exactly this one, but at least I can have an idea of how that works. Now, what I found is that usually the voltage going to the controlling IC is provided by the same circuitry which provides the 5 volts standby. Now, first of all, we know that we have 5 volts standby, so that's good news. Uh, the thing is, it looks like the um, 5 volts standby is provided by this little yellow transformer that we see behind in here. And if I'm reading the schematics correctly, this little circuit here is actually supplied using DC from the mains power supply. So you've got mains coming in, going through the bridge rectifier, and then you've got the big capacitors, and then you've got DC, whatever voltage that is. That's actually used to switch that little transformer. Now, the thing is, you cannot use a transformer, whichever type it is, with DC. It has to be other AC or switched DC. That's the principle of switching power supplies. You get DC, you switch it high, at a high frequency, 
and you need much smaller transformers uh, or cores to get you know decent amount of power while with linear transformers you use ac uh, lower frequency but you need the big transformers now this little transformer which is providing 5 volt standby and the voltage for the controller is a small switching power supply but it's not working with the main switching controller which is idle when you well, it's not idle, it's, it's, it's powered off when you plug mains into this thing. So if I understand it right, and I could be mistaken about that, this little circuitry here, it's a passive switching power supply. So it doesn't have an IC, so it doesn't have an actual controller. Uh, it has a bunch of components, including transistors and capacitors, which are, you know, the moment they are fed energy, power, electricity, they just start switching, probably uh, some sort of predefined frequency, which is probably not going to be extremely accurate, but it's fine. It's 5 volts standby, which is not critical, and it's the initial voltage for the controller. And then when the controller is actually starting, it will power itself with the actual main power supply. So the first thing I want to do, I want to take a look at that 5 volts. I know it's reading OK on my multimeter. I want to see what it reads on the oscilloscope. So if I'm seeing this right, this is the output of the switching transformer uh, for the 5 volts before the diode, before the capacitor. So that's going to be switching stuff. Let's take a look. 3, 2, 1, go. And yes, as you can see, it got pulses. It's reading something like 50 kilohertz or something like that. So it's a bit all over the place. Uh, but you got pulses. Now let's see what we read after the diode. So also the capacitor is going to be in the way. 3, 2, 1, go. And we got our 5 volts, it's really dirty, um, but it's, I think it's more or less 5 volts. So that seems to be working, even though I'm not sure whether, you know, all those spikes are supposed to be there. But that's another story, and that is fine. Now, the, the middle pin is the, let's call the ground of that transformer, the output. Uh, the other side, if I'm seeing that right, is the one that is going to the uh, VCC of the IC. Um, so that's the pin that I traced, that's the one with the X. I was uh, tracing the other one with the with the black dot. And if you follow this pin, it's going down here. I, I marked a little bit the PCB to make it easier. Uh, it's not too much, but anyway, it's coming down here, uh, down to here. There's a link in here, there's a resistor here, and it comes here where you got the diode after the output of the transformer. So transformer is output in here, is being rectified, uh, is following this trace, is going to the IC, and uh, these two circled pins are capacitors. So you've got a couple of capacitors, I guess, to smooth out the um, those pulses coming from the transformer. So let's see what we got out of the transformer. Three, two, one, go. There we go, we got a similar signal, it's just higher. Uh, it's 80 some volts peak to peak, so that's quite a lot. Now after the diode, it's all positive. Uh, however, if you notice, you know, there's not much left. So this is what I'm seeing, and it's peak to peak 20 volts, but it's not smooth at all. And let's say the main voltage is about six something volts, which is what my multimeter is reading. Now, I'm not sure whether this is a fault, so it's not supposed to be like that, and the whole voltage is sagging because something is shorted or not working, or these are simply the capacitors not doing what they're doing. And obviously this is exactly what I'm reading on pin 12 of the IC, so you know it's going more or less through a resistor and then it's going straight to pin 12 of the IC. So my next step would be to replace capacitors. <laughs> Obviously, we got these two capacitors in the way. One is this one, and one is this one. Uh, I believe, I don't, I, they're not very big. That's a bit concerning, because they're not massive. I think they're only one microfarad or something like that. So I'm not entirely sure that that is a problem, but they are in the way. They're actually um, located on the VCC trace that goes to the pin. So next step, remove them, replace them, test them, and see if that changes anything. If that doesn't change anything, uh, I think I'll have to remove the IC, the TL494, and see by any chance the voltage is coming back to what it's supposed to be. Uh, if that's the case, that would mean that the uh, IC is gone and needs a replacement. Now, this is a 22 microfarad, so it's not too bad as a capacitance, but it's reading 0 0.14 
kilo ohms. So hopefully that's our problem and we'll replace the other one as well and check the other one as well. Well, it looks like I'm running out of capacitors. I haven't got 22, I've got 27 50 volts. Uh, I hope it's okay for a test and uh, I'm ordering some, some new ones anyways. This is supposed to be a 10 microfarad, 50 volts. It is reading more or less 10 microfarad, but this one is also reading 0.1 kilo ohms. So um, it's way off tolerance and hopefully, again, that's our problem. If you need minus five volts for some of your hardware, but your power supply doesn't supply minus five volts, well, then there's a few solutions. One, it's Necroware's Voltage Blaster. Uh, it's a little PCB that fits into an ISA slot and uses one of the existing rails to generate the minus five volts. It's a pretty neat solution, works totally fine, uh, but it uses one of your ISA slots. Another solution is Bits and Bolts uh, Voltage Minus Five Volts uh, Generator, which uh, plugs onto a 90 degree adapter directly on the ATX uh, cable here so uh, it doesn't use any of your ISA slots. Both projects are available online for free, and if you need the PCB manufacturer, well then PCB Way can help you. Particularly the Bits and Bolts project is also available, uh, fully assembled and populated from PCB Way, so you don't have to worry about soldering those uh, SMD components and also sourcing that, those components if you don't happen to have them, because those components are very cheap when purchased in quantity, but if you need to buy one or two, they can be expensive online. The process to order is extremely simple. Both projects have what's called the Gerber file, uh, which you then can upload on PCBWay.com and uh, get your PCBs manufactured and delivered at your place. Take a look at PCBWay.com. The link is also down below in the description. And don't forget the other services that you can get from PCBWay, like 3D printing and metal sheet fabrication. Let me thank PCBWay for sponsoring this channel. Their help makes these videos possible. And now let's go back to this power supply and see if we can make it work. Okay, with the capacitors replaced, let's see if we get any difference in three, two, one, go. Oh yes, look at that. It's got much better. But this is five volts per division, so it's five, 10, 15, it's like 17 volts, amazing. Maybe we got it. Okay, well, uh, um, let's try and power up this thing. Just out of curiosity, let's see what my multimeter is reading on pin 12 now when I'm applying power. Three, two, one, go. We got 19 volts, which is great. I was looking for 12, we got 19, fantastic. So uh, maybe we can give it a go. I've got the multimeter connected to the 12 volts output of the power supply. I'm a bit concerned because obviously there's still swollen capacitor and stuff. I think I'll give it like a quick go, see if we have any activity whatsoever, and then I'll switch it off, replace all the capacitor, and then test it again. Let's give it a go and see if by any chance it works in three, two, one, go. Let's give it a go and see if it works. So let's apply mains power and let's turn on the power supply in three, two, one, go. Yes, it's working. It's making noise, but we got an output. So I don't want to use this power supply in its current conditions with all the swollen capacitors and stuff, but it is working, it's great. So let me go ahead, swap all those capacitors, especially the, uh, the faulty one, the swollen one and everything. Uh, we replaced three, the ESR was all over the place, so all these capacitors have to go in this case, and then we'll test it again. Replacing the capacitor was easy. The board is single layer and was easy to work with. The PCB was of decent quality and it didn't fall apart on me. Some capacitors were actually reading okay, but the vast majority were either completely gone or reading way off. These 1000 microfarad capacitor doesn't read anything anymore, and so does this 370 microfarad one. This 2200 microfarad one is also bad, and this 220 microfarad has seen better days. This 1000 microfarad capacitor might be slightly off tolerance, as it only reads 22 microfarad and a slightly elevated ESR of 58 ohms. Well, I guess it's not unexpected with such prestigious brands being used. Who's you? Who's you? Who's you? A small bunch of components actually read okay, like these 330 microfarad one, but most of them were completely gone. 
As a final step, let's get rid of this glue, which is known for becoming conductive over time, so I'll scrape it off. All right, all the capacitors are replaced besides the two main capacitors here. I haven't got them and um, so for now we'll do without them. I think it would be a good idea to replace them all considering the state all the other capacitors were. Because I've replaced capacitors, I did check the polarity, but you never know. So I got a little bit of protection here and uh, we'll uh, power up and see if we get anything out of this thing. And if it works, then we'll take care of the fan if we can. Okay, I'm ready to power up. Let's give mains to the thing. Three, two, one, go. Got mains. And let's power up the power supply in three, two, one, go. Oh, wow, we got 12 volts out of it. And so far, no smoke. <laughs> Amazing. Cool, it's working. <laughs> let's check the five volts. Three, two, one, go. We also get five volts and it's not making squealing noise anymore. <laughs> Amazing. I think this is 3.3 volts. Yeah, we've got 3.3 volts here. And I don't think it's the uh, blue one is minus 12, I think. Let's have a look. Yes, which is never spot on. And that's it, I think. Five volts standby, still okay. 5.09 and that's it. It's working. Fantastic. <laughs> this is so cool. It, it's a horrible power supply. It's so cheap. Uh, but it's nice to not only have been able to um, bring it back to life, but also trace what the problem was and replace just the components to bring it up to um, back up and running. Because, uh, you know, everybody can just replace capacitors, but it was nice to follow the traces and, found, and find the actual problem with the power supply. Next step, let's see if we can do anything for the fan. All right, let's have a look at this fan. It's pretty gunky, uh, so I'm not sure we can do anything. It feels pretty um, cheap. He says, Ruilion Science. Okay, let's remove the sticker and see what's behind. Okay, well, we do have a little lid, uh, like a rubber lid, which can be opened. Now, because it is very gunky, I think I want to wash it a bit. So I think I'll use some white spirit or maybe WD-40. I'll use WD-40 just to wash it, uh, remove whatever it's inside that's gunked up, and then I'll add some lubricant. Look at that, it's back to life. When I started working on this fan, my bench power supply was reading 120 milliamps and now it's reading 99. 98 sometimes so uh, yeah it's um, come out pretty nice i don't recommend you do that to something you actually care because chances are this will uh, seize again at some point but for this power supply it's just uh, you know for fun and experiment and and we'll see how, how much it lasts Okay, the power supply is more or less put together. I'd like to give it a quick test before I actually wire it to a motherboard for a, for a real test. This is my dummy load. It's, uh, I think it can, it can go up to 180 watts. I'm not gonna do that right now. Uh, also because my wires are kind of thin, so I'm gonna burn everything. Uh, but you know, just to uh, just draw some amps and make sure that everything works. 
The multimeter is wired to the 12 volts, let's power up and see what happens. In 3, 2, 1, go. The fan is spinning, we got 12 volts. The fan is spinning at full speed, I didn't even bother to just put some regulation or anything. But it's fine, we do have the fan spinning, which is great. Let me turn on this thing. Okay, we're drawing one amp, two amps, three amps, four amps, five amps, yeah. I mean, this is the five volts line, it can go up to 35, so you know, this is really nothing, but uh, I guess it's a good, you know, little test, uh, make sure everything works. Six, seven amps. Yeah, it seems to be working fine, 12 volts is fine, five volts is fine. Fantastic, it works. <laughs> Well, it's working. I don't have a board which requires minus five volts, but I'm assuming it's okay. Uh, was it worth the time that we invested onto this? Probably not. Again, I, I have a feeling I'm still not gonna use one of these power supplies. I'm gonna use like a modern one with an adapter, but it was like a good opportunity just to look into it, to learn a few things and fix something. Cause uh, if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you also like when things are coming back to life as I do. Anyways, I'm not throwing it away. It's just there and I know I have a power supply which has a pretty high 5 volts current potential and uh, the minus 5 volts. If one day I have something to test, I know I have a power supply available and that's not bad. I really enjoyed the process, particularly because we just didn't recap the whole unit. Uh, we found a problem together and uh, replaced those two capacitors. The power supply came back to life, squealing, making noise. It was still not working, but you know, at least we knew what the problem was. We found it with your oscilloscope and that's when you have a little bit more satisfaction because you know, Anybody is capable of throwing components at a board and fix everything, but you know, where's the fun in doing that? I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, as usual, I'd appreciate a thumb up down below and consider subscribing to this channel if you like this kind of things. For now, thank you for watching, have a great day, and I hope to see you again here soon on this channel for my next videos. Thank you very much and goodbye. Bye bye.